Today we're at the Air Force Academy shop, uh, Auto Skill Center, working on a 1957 T-Bird. It is a one of one. It's an absolutely beautiful car. Unfortunately, the clutches in the transmission have burned up, and therefore we have to get the transmission out so that we can rebuild it. This car is so original that we really want to keep as many original parts in the transmission as we can. So. I'm going to try and sneak the transmission out without removing the engine and the hood and all the other stuff that technically is supposed to come out when you take the transmission out of these. So we're going to get it up in the air. We're going to work on getting the transmission out. There's not a whole bunch of information out there on the YouTubes. So I'm going to attempt to make a video of it. So let's get after it. Get this thing in the air. So we'll have to drop the drive shaft out. You can see the transmission goes all the way up here over the, the cross, the X in the cross member in the chassis. And that is a pain in the butt because this transmission mount here also does not come out of the car. So we have to sneak this whole transmission off of the engine down and out. And I don't know how successful I will be with that because oh, there's not much room at all in here. So I guess so we got some oil leaks. That's, that'd be pretty common on these motors. It looks like we're leaking from the oil pan area a bit. Probably front and rear main seal. That might be something we try and address while we're in here doing all of this. Who knows? If the engine does have to come out, it would make sense to... Oh, there's some coolant. That is engine coolant. So we got coolant on the starter. That's odd. Looks like it's well lubricated grease. Is that an external oil pump? I, I don't know anything about Forge, really. Uh, I'm a Chevy guy. But that looks like an external oil pump. Huh. Okay. Bizarrely odd. I guess not so much. I think my Rambler wagon has a external oil pump on the side of the six-cylinder in it. But it looks like we got some healing going out from paint is that no that's dry I don't know that's the motor mount really that, that thing is half the size of my pinky and that's holding the motor oh wait no we got a front mount never mind that's just stabilizing it all right Oh, that's loose. Oh, that's, yeah, okay. That's, that, yeah, that's, um, that's good. Yeah. We'll have to, uh, tighten that up. That's still tight. What do we got going on? That's, okay, okay. We can't just pretend like we didn't see that one. We'll, we'll tighten that up. Uh, we got... Is that one? Wait, what? Oh, no, that's supposed to be like that, it looks like. So, so that that's wrong. These, the rest of those are okay. Yeah. Needs a little going over. A little love little uh, work but uh, looks like the drive shaft is fairly clean anyways first things first let's get the pan or let's let's drain the fluid out of uh, that looks like that maybe goes up to a transmission cooler or something All right. anyways let's let's get this off let's drain the pan get the pan off get this fluid out of here Oh, 
That's the dipstick tube, I think. Maybe? That's what it looks like? Is that? Yep. Yeah, that's the dipstick tube. So we'll just take the dipstick tube off, drain everything out, take the pan off, look and see what we got, and take an assessment there. Yeah, that's really, really bad. Really dark. Smells absolutely horrible. Completely burned. <sighs> okay, so I guess get the inspection cover off of there. Start taking some of the dust shield, everything off. Maybe linkage. That looks like throttle valve linkage right there. Huh. Eww, yuck. You can see those. It's a big fuzzball on a magnet. It's really, really nasty looking. Let's see what we got. We got uh, it's a little bit gritty. Definitely metallic. Really fine. No big, no big chunks. So I'm going to say probably mostly just clutches. Probably mostly just clutches. I'm going to hope that there's not a whole, whole lot of material from bands. Uh, Taking metal off of the drums, because that would be bad. Well, I'm going to say mostly clutches and steels. I don't think anything like broke. There's not big chunks. So, definitely time for a rebuild. But probably not ultra bad. It stinks so bad. Really, really stinks. See, that's where the magnet was right there. Got a brass filter up there. Yeah, it doesn't look horrible, except for the fluid is burned because clutches are burned. There's our front band. Uh, can't really see the rear band or anything. Yeah. Yeah, looks like this looks like fun. No. No, it doesn't. Let's take the suspension cover off of here. Well, what's that? I don't know. What is that? That obviously shouldn't be. Kind of got the shape of uh, the end of the torque converter or some, something. Whatever it is, it fell off of where it was supposed to be. I don't think that's supposed to be like that. I had no idea Forge came with extra pieces. Hmm. Get the start. Yeah. Okay. Uh, drive shaft is out. Transmission cross member mount is out. Pan is empty and set back up. Inspection covers off. I don't know what the heck that was that fell out of there. 
uh, engine oil is drained, drained out the filter, just set it back on to keep the cap out. Disconnected the oil gauge, line, oil, pressure, light, whatever. I uh, just unbolted the exhaust. Uh, the side motor mounts to keep it from rotating, rotationing in place. Uh, they are out. Um, I took this bracket off for the hard lines to the transmission. Took the hard lines to the cooler out. Radiator is drained. And you still need to drain the block. Because we've decided uh, it's just going to be easier to remove all of this and take it out. I got this wire disconnected off the back of the generator. Alternator generator, whatever it is in this car. Um, I'll probably need to take it. I don't know if that'll be easier to reach from the top or down here. Probably down here. The connector for the fuel pump. Connection for the fuel pump. The connectors for the power steering need to come loose. The fuel pump. I've got the front motor mount is loose. I was going to take that out. And then I realized probably a bad idea with the fan shroud where it is and everything. So I need to take the fan, the lower fan shroud off. So that I can lift the radiator out from the top. Uh, and I think whatever wires up top for coil or whatever stuff um, we're just gonna lift the whole engine transmission out as an assembly like we're supposed to and put the engine on a stand because I'm not really a Ford guy but I'm pretty sure that this is Chevy orange and I'm pretty sure that there's spots on the block up there where the paints coming off that actually have more blue tinge to them from the original paint because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a Ford Blue. So since we gotta change out the freeze plugs and it's leaking, we're just gonna take the whole thing out, make it easy on us, and uh, clean the whole motor up while we're rebuilding the transmission. Get it all resealed up nice and clean. Try and get in here, scrub and clean the whole underside of the car clean it up and uh, just kind of fix everything that's going wrong with it so that's the objective at this point right now probably easier to do that less risky than trying to finagle stuff well, that sucks it needs a freeze plug Well, I just am making a huge freaking mess now. So what's happening is I pretty much got everything disconnected except for the power steering and the fuel line, right? But every time I go to open the fuel line and take it off, it never stops pouring fuel. It's like it's siphoning from the gas tank all the way up and just pouring out the fuel line because the fuel pump and everything's created a siphon, right? So it's just siphoning from the gas tank at this point. And then I saw, so I was like, how do I break a siphon? I have no freaking clue, really. So I went up to the carburetor and I disconnected the fuel line from the carburetor. Well, it looks like my fuel bowl may be starting to empty a little bit, maybe. I don't know. It's got a glass fuel bowl filter up there before the carb. But it's just like, it like keeps siphoning. So most of this down here is a big mess of fuel. You can see where the fuel's been coming down the frame. 
it's been washing off undercoating and grime and grit and it's been running down there I've been trying to catch fuel that's all fuel that's all fuel so I'm thinking maybe if I bring the car back down and then I take a fitting and I blow air with the, the compressed air in through the top and push it all back to the gas tank maybe I can stop the siphon I don't know because what's happening is the fuel tank is here and honestly it's not huge probably 12 15 gallons maybe I don't know but my fuel line from the tank comes out down here towards the bottom and then it goes up over the rear end comes back down out here it looks like it looks like this line here and then so this guy comes up the big fuel line whatever and then it's got a siphon because all this is sitting below that like it's not siphoning out where I disconnected from the fuel from the fuel make it happener but it is siphoning out from down at this level and I tried taking this one off it does the same thing and that sits actually lower than that one does even so it's like how do I how do I break the siphon on it I don't I don't know so I guess I'll lower the car back down and try and blow some compressed air from the top down push the fuel back to the fuel tank because otherwise I have no idea how I'm going to stop that from happening. I may just have to go get a fuel can and just let it flow all into the fuel can. There's lots of videos on YouTube of how to siphon gas, but not how to get it to stop siphoning. This is what we got going on. We need the length in front of the T-Bird so we don't hit, but we gotta get back far enough over the engine transmission to be able to reach on that. So, I was out here, I brought it in a couple. I think we're good there. We'll be close enough, we won't be hitting the nose of the car. Don't tell me I didn't record yeah, any of that.